Okay, proof that the rapture happens before the mark of the beast comes out. Proof that the rapture happens before the tribulation period is from Revelation chapter 3, verse 10. I'm going to read it to you. Here's what it says. Revelation chapter 3, verse 10. Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come upon the whole world to test those who live on the earth. That's proof we're all going to be raptured up. Especially these, wait a minute, let's read this again. Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, here's what the Lord told me to ask you. Endure what, you North American Christians? It says you have endured patiently to American Christians. Endured what? You haven't endured nothing. Now, if this was written to, to the, the North Korean Christians, if this was written to the Christians in China or Russia during the time of persecution, when during during the uh, Cold War, when they were putting Christians to death, I'd say yeah. But North American Christians to stand here and try to choose this scripture to say, well, I've endured patiently. I'm going to go up in the rapture before anything happens. This is proof right here. The Lord told me to ask you, what have you endured as a North American Christian? Well, I had to, when I bought that, I had to pay. I had to pay fifty months on my car. That's patient endurance. I bought a brand new Mercedes Benz at a twelve hundred dollar a month payment for sixty months. That is patient. I endured patiently. What have you endured? I was at the Walmart checkout line and the girl in front of me decided to pay with a check. I took forever. I'm enduring patiently. Shut up. Let me tell you what's going to happen. The mark of the beast is going to come out. And the Bible says that those who are lukewarm, disobedient, will quickly fall away and take the mark of the beast. And so long as we're quoting which, well, there's seven churches to choose from. And everybody in North America wants to choose Philadelphia and say, well, since you've kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come upon the whole world. Why didn't you choose Laodicea? Because I think this applies more to the North American church. You who are lukewarm, I'm going to vomit you up. Why didn't you choose Sardis? What the Bible says, wake up, verse 2. Revelation chapter 3, verse 2. Wake up! Why don't you believe God for Thyatira? Nevertheless, I have this against you. You tolerate that woman Jezebel. Why didn't you choose Smyrna? I believe we're all going to be raptured up because I believe after all, Revelation chapter 2, verse 18, 20, says, nevertheless, I have this against you. You tolerate that woman Jezebel. Why don't we, aren't we, why aren't we all quoting that verse? As why we're not going to have to go through the tribulation or experience any hardships or trials. We're just going to all be rap, raptured up. What about Smyrna? Look at what it says to, the, to Smyrna. Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you. And you will suffer persecution for ten days. Be faithful even to the point of death, and I will give you the crown of life. How can we never quote that scripture? Out of all the seven churches that God is saying, we all, we go through the whole, we read through the whole thing looking for what we want. Okay, no, not Smyrna. I don't like that one. Uh, Pergonum, uh, let's see, uh, hmm. it says in Pergonum, you remain faithful to my name. Oh, okay, I'll choose that one. Oh, wait, it says, nevertheless, I have these things against you. Oh, for, no, no, skip. So we've eliminated Smyrna because we don't want to have to go through any trials. We've eliminated Pergonum because it says, nevertheless, I have a few things against you. Thyatira, no, I don't want... It says you tolerate that woman Jezebel. That's obviously not us. 
Let's keep reading until we find the one we want. Let's see. Revelation to the church of Sardis. It says, wake up. Mm, nah, I don't want that one. Well, what about Laodicea? Oh, you who are lukewarm, I'm going to vomit you up. Ah, forget that. Dang. Which one do we want to choose for our end time verse? Oh, I know. Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will keep you from the hour of trial. Ooh, 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 Revelation 10, Revelation 3.10. That's the one I want. That's the one I want. Why didn't you choose Smyrna? Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you, and you will suffer persecution for ten days. Be faithful even unto death, to the point of death, and I will give you the crown of life. How come we're not all running around quoting that one? That's the end time. What if I were to tell you in the same way that you quote Revelation chapter 3 verse 10, what if I were to tell you I believe it's going to be Smyrna and that I want to suffer for God and prove my faith even possibly even to the point of death so that I can get that crown of life that he's talking about. How come nobody ever chooses Laodicea? You who are lukewarm, I'm going to vomit you up. When if, if we're really honest about the North American church, if we really, really, really prayed and seek God, which one would God say? Do you really think he'd say, oh yeah, Revelation chapter 3 verse 10, you're all going to be raptured up before you... Meanwhile, in practically the same breath, Jesus says to Smyrna, you're going to suffer and put in prison, even to the point of death. Okay, so I guess as long as we're just going to pick and choose what verses we want to throw out and what verses we want to hold to, how about we throw out all of Revelation chapter 14, starting in verse 6 through 20, because in Revelation 14, starting in verse 6, the Bible says the gospel goes out to every nation, language, tribe, and people. And the very next thing to happen is Babylon the Great falls and then the mark of the beast comes out. And then this, call, this calls for patient endurance on the part of the saints. And then the Bible says in Revelation 14, uh, 13, Blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth. And then after that, the rapture or the harvest of the earth. So basically, Babylon the Great Falls, before the rapture, Babylon the Great Falls, the mark of the beast comes out, and God will say, blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth. And then that goes back to Revelation chapter 6 verse 11 where God says, wait a little bit longer until the number of fellow saints to be put to death for their faith is complete. So God says, blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth. And then after that, the rapture. 